Today, we're going to be talking about all the games in which we can drift in. Right, Bob? And we're going to rate every game one by one as well. First of all, Carx Drift Racing Online. So yeah, we now have a damage mod in Carx PC. I personally tested it out as well. It was better than I expected. Bunch of modded maps, bunch of modded cars, but sadly not for console. And as for drifting physics, drifting is not realistic, but it is fun. And you know, there's also cross-platform support, which means if you're on PC and your buddy's on console, you guys can play together in one single server, which is uh, lovely. In addition, Carx has really good wheel support nowadays didn't used to be the case i've tested the modes r3 r5 r9 and r12 all those direct drive wheels work i haven't tested fanatec but they probably will work as well now cars in carx have a lot of customization and now in carx you can download liveries on console as well which is pretty cool now let's talk about downsides of carx the biggest one carx is now focusing only on mobile games because that's where the revenue is at that's the money for example us console and pc players are struggling with lag every single day does carx really care no. Another downside of Carx is the lack of content. Now, they are giving us like some new features, some new cars here and there, like doing the bare minimum. But you know, the community has been asking for new maps for years. Are we getting new maps? No. Again, they're gonna use the development time on their, uh, you know, their mobile games. Now, there's also the hacking issue, which uh, I made a video about. They started to improve on the hacking issue, but afterwards, I've heard nothing. So they still haven't fixed the hacking issue, actually. Now, the Carx roughly on PC is 13 USD. Take the prices with grain of salt, depends on where you're from and if there's sales or whatever. So, uh, my overall rating, focusing on the drifting part, it's 8.5. Need for Speed Unbound. Absolutely amazing graphics. They nailed the city. Now the flames and the cartoony vibes, you know, in the beginning felt quite goofy. Uh, we couldn't turn them off. That was the problem. But as far as I understand now, this issue is pretty much a result. Now the physics. Default physics ain't that good for drifting. Always being heavily on the arcade side. But good news. There are drift mods for Nipper Speed Unbound. Here you can see drift mod in action. Speaking of drifting, there are drift events in Unbound. On top of that, we have the uh, classic police chase which for me has always been the biggest reason like uh, why I fell in love with the Need for Speed series in the first place. Uh, now the story. Personally, I think the story in Unbound is weak. My biggest issue with the game is actually it got boring so quick. But we're gonna focus on the drifting part. Uh, the price on average for Unbound is 70 USD. And I'm gonna rate this game 5 out of 10. Forza Horizon 5. Amazing game for drifting because the drifting physics and the wheel support, it feels good. Only downside for the wheel support is I can never get my direct drive wheels working there. But a G29, Trustmaster T300, they work flawlessly. The physics, again, not realistic. I guess people call it Simcade nowadays. It's like uh, something between a simulator and like an arcade game. Also, graphically, very gorgeous game. And a lot of cars to choose from as well. Huge car list. Now, speaking of cars, upgrades are kind of limited. But at least we have the option to download livery. Story in Forza Horizon 5. It's lacking hard. Luckily, there are like a couple game in Forza, but dude, it'll get boring so fast, and the map is just like a 95% just empty wasteland. I don't know. Also, the convoy system in Forza is horrible. It's so bad, bro. You have to look one by one at people, and then when you have added them in the Xbox app, you have to invite them into the convoy as well, after inviting them into your friend list. It's just Jesus, bro. And the convoy system is sometimes buggy as well. But uh, driving and drifting is very fun. The price on average for Forza Horizon 5 is 60 USD, uh, and my rating for Forza in terms of drifting. I'm gonna rate Forza 7 out of 10. Drift 21. This game has an amazing concept. You have your garage, you can build your engine from scratch, tune your cars part by part, extremely deep customization, and you can drive and drift your cars as well, which you have built, right? So it sounds good. Where's the problem? Well, the driving, drifting in that game is horrible. The physics are so bad. It feels like they spent like 99% of the development or like tuning cars and like only 1% on the physics. Drift 21 has so limited cars. And the game also lacks multiplayer. There's absolutely nothing to do with the game. No story mode. Uh, the drivable test map, small. The game is gonna be fun for like few hours and then you have pretty much explore the whole game. You've done everything. And the price for the game is 30 USD as well. I'm gonna rate this game 2 out of 10. Cool concept, doesn't work. 
Roblox. Now recently I've gotten into Roblox, but with a steering wheel. Now on a wheel, Roblox Drift games are horrible. There is actually no wheel support. What I do is I make my wheel act as a controller with emulator softwares, right? We also have to mention that Roblox Drift games are free. You don't need to pay money. That is a huge benefit for Roblox. And I believe all the Roblox games are made by the people as well, which is uh, even more dope. That means there's like unlimited number of games to play because there's always going to be something new out tomorrow. Physics are very arcadey. Now, it may not be realistic, but I can see why people play Roblox. Uh, anyway, Roblox free game, gonna give it 8 out of 10 in terms of uh, drifting. Beam NG. Okay, a lot of people are gonna disagree with me here and say it's a bad take. But I don't think Beam NG is a good game for drifting. It is a good game for many other things like off-roading, racing, but drifting ain't one of them. It simply doesn't feel right. And no, don't be like, oh, go skill issue, skill. Shut it. I mean, maybe a little bit. I just don't enjoy the drifting part in uh, BMG. Like, other than that, it's an excellent game. Another issue I have is with the multiplayer. Online is so clunky, it's so raw, it's so laggy, but I mean, it does work. Now, on the plus side, there's a lot of drift mods available and a lot of different tracks. You will never run out of content. You can set up BMG however you want. It's like a huge sandbox game. You can make BMG into whatever you want in terms of like driving games. And no other game has more satisfying car crashes as BMG, period. And the game cost, I believe, around 20 USD. So I'm gonna be rating BMG 5 out of 10. But keep in mind that does not represent the game as a whole. Only the drifting experience. Don't cancel me, please. Assetto Corza. Now, I love that game, but I do hate some things about Assetto as well. For example, no car crash damage. And when you do crash, it, it, it's weird at times. Another downside is that the game is very fun with mods. But on console, you don't have access to mods. On PC, however, you will never run out of content. There's new maps, new servers, new cars. Mods are being made daily. It's also the best game to organize virtual drift tournaments. The drifting physics, they feel very realistic. I mean, depending on the car pack as well. It's a proper sim game. Wheel support, absolutely amazing. Every single wheel will work. You could plug in a microwave, would probably work. Graphics are, you know, it's pretty good. Especially if you use some mod filters, shaders. Another downside, however is no visual car tuning. Servers have like specific cars already, like preset cars. You can choose the car and that's it. Like you can adjust the car ratio and tire pressure and other stuff in the pits, but uh, nothing visually. So a setup costs 20 USD and my rating for the game in terms of drifting is 9 out of 10. Overdrift Festival. Now this is an interesting one. The developers are actually still updating in the game and it's dedicated purely for drifting. It has an open world map. The graphics are very decent. Physics, you know, they are arcade but they're not bad the biggest problem however of the game is the sync between players while they're driving or like in a tandem now the cars are amazing in that game and there's some uh, tuning you can do as well they also like uh, should probably add like constant support and i think it'd be a decent game there's also ai traffic but uh the ai traffic is not synced between players sadly which is really weird i mean it's also been a few months since they played it so maybe some of these issues have gotten better i don't know i will definitely have to revisit this game again very soon but uh it's, it's a great drift game, but I don't know. There's way too many issues. And the price, I think, is a little bit too steep as well, which is at 25 USD, by the way. So my rating is gonna be 6 out of 10. That's the best I can give. Live for speed. First of all, there is a free version of this game which is awesome. If you don't like how it feels, you lose nothing. Now, if you try the free version, you kind of like it, then you can always upgrade to a paid version. And that will give you access to like mods and like uh, overall like more content in the game. Overall, this game is like kind of similar to a set of course. Like back in the day, people played Live for Speed. Like it was the go-to game. That being said, what's crazy is that this game is over 20 years old now and it has car crash damage. That is wild to me. The wheel support is good and you can very easily join online service. Thanks to my there's a lot of content as well however you know lacking kind of on the track side it doesn't have like proper modded tracks as far as i know it doesn't have console support as well and one thing that annoys me about the game is like you can't like drift around for like 10 minutes on most cars you gotta constantly reset your cars because the tires blow out or like we are off and i understand it's uh, realistic but i wish there was an option to turn it off Anyway, a paid version of the game would cost, uh, I think it's 24 USD. Uh, and my rating for Live for Speed is gonna 
be 8 out of 10. The Crow 2. Now, the wheel support ain't close to realistic at all. You don't even count this tier with the wheel if you're uh, drifting. But I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I managed to learn how to drift in the Crew 2 on a wheel in one hour. Direct drive wheels, however, don't work. Uh, the city as well uh, felt alive. And there's actually a lot of good base content. Even though I don't think we have mods there. But uh, different types of vehicles, boats, motorcycles, planes. I mean, it's a decent game. Definitely not for sim users, though. Uh, the game is around 50 USD. And I will give it 6 out of 10. Gran Turismo 7. This game, I'm honestly gonna say, has the best graphics by default. The vanilla game just looks insanely good. You cannot use mods, though. Because it's not a PC game. But you don't need to. The game looks amazing. Uh, so yeah, you gotta have a PlayStation content to be able to play it, sadly. Uh, but the game has good wheel support. Physics, very good excellent physics i'd go as far as to say it's probably the best sim game on playstation the game cost around 60 usd and i'm gonna give it like 9 out of 10 it deserves it forza motorsport 7 now this is the equivalent of uh, gran turismo 7 on uh, playstation right i do slightly like gran turismo 7 graphics a bit more but again it's a little bit newer game anyway now i've tried drafting a forza motorsport 7 quite a few times and it is mad difficult but uh, when you do get it right it's satisfying so that is definitely a skill issue now the game being a microsoft product you can play it on pc unlike gran turismo 7 that's kind of cool forza motorsport 7 cost around 50 US the, and I'm gonna give it 7 out of 10. 5 of them. So 5 of them is something that allows you to access modded servers in GT5. And some of those 5 of them servers have proper steering wheel support with force feedback which is nuts now one of the best 5m servers on a wheel is code 94 go check it out has a lot of good drift cars drag cars different tracks as well as the open world main map as well you can drift anywhere with anyone you can join huge car meets. it's a really popular server now the driving physics obviously arcade pure arcade but it sure is fun on a wheel sad thing is can't do it in console now since fire does require gt5 i'll mention the price is gonna be around 40 usd roughly i'll give five of them the score of seven out of ten so here is the full list of games and their ratings as well uh, based on pretty much my own personal opinion so take all of this with a grain of salt but if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe and as always stay sideways peace